This is Headlines from Palestine. I'm Chris Smiley with If Americans Knew. The Palestinian village of Berlin has marked its 13th anniversary of ongoing nonviolent resistance. Every Friday for the past 13 years, villagers have held demonstrations. I personally have been to the weekly demonstration, and many internationals often travel to participate or document the resistance. While internationals are usually treated differently than Palestinians, you see here they can still experience the same violence from Israeli forces as this German solidarity activist found out. So what are the strategies behind the protesting and what do Palestinians hope to accomplish? Well, one of the objectives is to call out to the international community for help, especially Americans. The United States is the key supporter of Israel. America is the largest single supplier of military equipment to Israel, who now has one of the most technologically advanced militaries in the world. This week, the United States military is conducting drills in the occupied territories to simulate a deployment if they were called to fight with Israel. Each year, various branches and levels of both countries' militaries hold numerous joint training exercises. They learn from one another, improve how they work together, and train for combat situations. Americans are directly connected to this conflict, and this organization exists to educate citizens on this major issue to help bring about a resolution. So it's important for us to take note and share this information. Palestinians pay a heavy price to get their message out. A video that has gone viral this week shows Palestinian protesters confronted by violence from Israeli soldiers. When medics try to attend to the critically wounded, soldiers try to prevent the medics from assisting. <laughs> Teenage activist Ahed Tamimi has had her trial delayed until next week, March 21st, as protests continue to call for her release. A leading activist and organizer, Munther Amira, was arrested during one of these demonstrations in December and has just been sentenced to six months in prison and five years probation. He was convicted on four charges relating to his participation in demonstrations, including participating in a march without a permit. The terms of his sentence will make it difficult for him to continue his role as a nonviolent organizer after he is released from prison. Amnesty International has called Munther Amira a prisoner of conscience and has called for his unconditional and immediate release. The incident that landed Ahed Tamimi in jail was when she was filmed slapping a soldier in her home just an hour after Israeli soldiers had shot her cousin Muhammad in the face. Mohammed Tamimi was recently arrested in the middle of the night and taken away for interrogation by Israeli forces, despite the fact that his medical condition has been widely reported, and that his head remains badly deformed from his wounds. The military interrogated him without the presence of a parent or a lawyer, and forced a confession that he was injured while he was riding his bicycle and fell off. Israel's coordination of government activities in the territories called the reports of the boy being shot fake news and accused the Tamimi family of a culture of lies and incitement. The Israeli agency then posted a report of the boy's injuries on social media, stamped with the word fake news on it. The Tamimi family has since released Muhammad's medical records, showing that he had indeed undergone emergency surgery to remove a rubber-coated steel bullet from the left side of his head on the day he was shot in December. Images of the bullet and a CAT scan of Muhammad's brain were also published by Israeli journalists. Thank you for watching. Please share this video and we'll catch you next time for more news from Palestine.